Welcome back to um, another video uh, talking about LT Spice. Uh, in the past, we've talked about DC analysis and DC sweep and how to configure LT Spice to do various things for you. Today, we're going to move into a new space and we're going to start looking at uh, signals that change with time. And then, then, of course, the response in the circuit will change in time. So what we need to do, we need to be able to create those waveforms, so creating custom waveforms uh, that change over time, and then taking a look at the behavior of the circuit over time, which we call transient simulation. So we're going to, LT Spice is very powerful, very intuitive, and allows us to do both of these rather simply. So I wanted here to introduce you guys to this so you can use these concepts to do natural response, step response, um, sinusoidal uh, um, steady state sinusoidal analysis of your circuit look to see what the voltage is, the current, how the circuit behaves in various uh, point in time. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in by talking about how do you configure a source uh, to have a time varying waveform. I will start with some couple of simple one. One is the pulse or the square wave, and then we move into maybe sinusoidal signals. Both of those very, very useful in electrical circuits analysis. So let's go ahead and, um, and take a look at that real quick. All right, so, um, um, Let's bring up the LT Spice. I have a simple circuit in here just to demonstrate the concepts. We've got a voltage source and we've got a resistor and inductor. Before I go too far, as you can see, the time constant is going to be L over R, about 10 microseconds is the time constant, just so you know how fast this, this, uh, this circuit can respond and change. Um, um, with this, as I, uh, with, because because of the values of R and uh, the inductor. Okay, so with that in there, let's go ahead and so we can right click on the power source, use the advanced feature to go in there and change the voltage source to do whatever we want to do. <clears throat> in this case, we want to do a pulse, and I want to keep it relatively simple. So we're going to say the pulse's initial value when it's there's nothing there is zero. Then when the on time, let's say it's 10 volts, keep it simple, whole numbers. I don't really need a delay. You can put a delay so you still can run it for this amount of time before you start collecting data. The rise time, I'm going to keep the rise time really, really short. I'm going to keep it around one microsecond so it's a sharp rise up. <clears throat> so it looks a lot like a, but like a square wave. If you want to slow it down you can put a different number in there but one microsecond is all i do and then how long do you want it to be on how long you want it to be off is purely up to you i'm going to set it as a 50 50 percent duty cycle so i'm going to say okay uh, keep it on for 50 make your period 100 microseconds so the let me put the use in there so it knows microsecond this way basically i'm saying okay the period is 100 microseconds, and during that 100 microsecond, half of it's on, half of it is off. And how many cycles I want to look at? I Just one cycle is good enough for what I want to do here. Uh, if you want more, you just put a different number in there, and you're good to go. So that's pretty much all you have to do. And now you've got your square wave set up. And you can notice it's also going to put this text in here, which basically says you're setting up a pulse. Your pulse goes from 0 to 10. You don't have any delay. You have one microsecond rise time, one microsecond fall time. You got 50 microsecond on time, 10 microsecond uh, uh, period. Oh, I'm sorry, 100 microsecond period. And then you've got one cycle you're going to look at. Perfect. Okay. So now that I've set it up, I've custom, have, have custom the, customized the waveform. All I have to do, go to the simulation and say, we used to do DC offset and all that. In this case, we want to do transient. We want to see how our circuit is changing over time. Uh, you can, I, I, if I run this thing for about at one cycle, I'll, that's all I need. So I'm going to run it for 100 microsecond. Start time, I'm going to start saving data immediately. You can put a zero in there. I'll just leave it blank. Maximum time, when I finish with one cycle, 100 microsecond, I'm done. So I can leave it blank. You can put a different number in there if you need to. 
Um, I'm not gonna have external DC supply or any of these other features here. And for most of the things we do, you don't need it. But feel free to go ahead and experiment with these things. You can change the characteristic of your uh, source by plugging different numbers in here. But for now, let's stick with this. Uh, it's a transient for 100 microsecond, and that's all we're doing. So automatically add the graph. Now, a couple of things you could do that. I put a label V in, and I put a label V out. So I could go right-click here, add a trace, and then put the you know, click on VN and say, okay, put it in. And what it does, it basically takes my input signal, which is a pulse, if you remember, and the pulse was 100 microsecond in period, 50 microsecond up, 50 microsecond down, the rise time and the fall time was one microsecond, and you can kind of see it happening here. Okay, um, that's one way, right click here, add the thing, but there's a simpler way to do that. You can literally go over a node, here's a node, and you see this little, uh, it looks like a probe. It's just looks like a pen or a probe. It's really a probe. Uh, the probe comes up and you can click on it and automatically puts the signals in here. And what it did, it put in the V out, the voltage here. So as you can see, this is an inductor. So initially it was open. So all the voltage that is here appears over here. And as the time goes by, it kind of comes down to zero. You see that? And if you see the rate of decay, it's going to be the one time constant of 10 microseconds. So within 10 microseconds, it falls to, you know, 1 over 2.7 or 1 over E. After 20 is 1 over E to the power of 2. And after 3 is E to the power of 3. This is called three time constant. This is getting pretty close to zero once you get to three time constant. And then this is the reverse, since this is, this is a negative direction drop, then the voltage actually, the reaction is that the voltage generated is going to be negative initially, and then as the time goes back, it goes up to zero. Okay, that's how inductors behave, makes sense, LDIDT. And it explains all of that to us, so it makes perfect sense. Um, so, so... So that's pretty much it. Now you know how to customize the a source. Take a look at this as a bonus. If, for example, you want to look at the current through this brand, this device, you can click on any of these um, components. And if you just click on it, it shows you what the current is. So now I'm looking at my input voltage. I'm looking at my output voltage. And I'm looking at, and I can kind of tell what the time constants are. And I'm looking also at the um current for this it's very easy very as hopefully you can see how useful this can be when you're analyzing your design and trying to figure out what's going on so we covered the key things so if you if you're asked to or you need to take a look at step response natural response it's a perfect way here you're looking at a step response here um, you're looking at a natural response as the as your source goes to zero so that's that's pretty good Okay, so let's say, oh, that's great, but now I want to look at a sinusoidal steady state and I want to see what happened, how my circuit behaves in that condition. You said, okay, that's great. So you, you go over here, you click on this, um, this device, right click on the device and say, okay, I want to just look at a sinusoidal signal. Uh, I want my amplitude to be 10. And um, if you have a phase delay, you can go ahead and put your phase delay here. I'm not going to put a phase delay here, but if you, if you wanted to, you can say, okay, shift it by 45 degrees. That's fine. And maybe I want to look at, and if I'm doing a sinusoidal, I would look at a couple, three, um, maybe two or three periods just to kind of see it move. Uh, so let's say maybe I do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do, let's do two periods. I'll actually see if couple of full periods running through. Now, uh, if you remember, if you remember, oh, I also got to tell him about the frequency. So let's, let's set the frequency. My screen is set to 100 microseconds. So I want to make the frequency high enough so I get a couple of these things fit in here. So let's say if I say my frequency is about 100, uh, yeah, 100K, so 100K frequency. That kind of gives me a gives me a pretty pretty good um, setup. Hopefully, hopefully our impedances won't get out of out of whack. If he does, we'll fix it in a minute. So 
omega is basically 200 pi. So we got to figure out J omega L versus R to make sure they're kind of in balance. If they're not, one is going to be so small I can't see it. <coughs> so the, I really don't need a delay, so let's get rid of the delays. And I don't need theta. That's fine. This is all good. And uh, we are in pretty good shape here as we go. And these are different ways of adding phase shifts. You can give it a degree, you can give it uh, um, time and time, you can give it um, uh, other ways of creating that phase shift. But I gave it a 45 degree, that's good enough. So we say, okay, that's cool. So now I have a sinusoidal signal running through. Let's, let's, let's uh, simulate this thing just to see. I still gonna use, uh, use the thing. So, so I had the previous signals in here, so we need to kind of clean this up just to make sure um, we are looking at what we want to look at, and that's, uh, that's usually a good practice to... Okay, so I told them only to do two signals, and because of my, the frequency I selected, two, two are here. So let me go do a little bit of a modification so we can kind of see a little more. Maybe I make these things 10 times bigger and if I make them 10 times bigger, or maybe five times bigger, then it would allow me to do that. The other thing is, before I go there, I want to also look at V out. So let me let me go ahead and add V out to this picture as well, so we see what it looks like, see if there's enough shift and sizes are appropriate for us to take a look at. So I'm going to go here, and that looks pretty good. Yeah, there's a little bit of a shift and all that. So let me, let me go ahead and make sure we're looking at enough... Um, period so we can kind of see. I actually don't like this blue color. It's kind of hard to see, so I'll show you how to change that. So let's go ahead and change it to, I don't know, what would be a good color to see. Blue definitely is not a good, let's see if it, this is a good color. Oh, that's better. That's a little easier to see. So that's cool. By the way, that was right clicking on this and changing the color. So now what I, what I want to do is I'll go back in here and then right click on this one. And, and 100 was a little too much, so maybe I go five times smaller, so we go with 20K and see what that's going to do for us. So we make it, okay, that's much nicer, much nicer. Okay, as you can see, and it all kind of makes sense. Now I have a sinusoidal signal going through, it looks pretty good. And then I notice that my output, V out, is smaller that makes sense because there's a voltage divider r z of r is 1k z of this one it looks like is maybe uh, based on this i would say is about uh, roughly 200 we can calculate it. it's j omega l so it's going to be basically 10 times 10 to the minus 3 for the l times omega which is 20,000 times 2 pi so 40,000 pi times 10, uh, 40,000 pi, yeah, yeah, just, just the right, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty, pretty even, so you can see that I peak, my peak voltage is around 8, so 2 volts is being consumed with the R, and the rest is coming here, I can also take a look at the current and take a look at that, the other thing I would like you to see, for example, since this is J omega L, everything is going to be shifted, uh, to the uh, to the left plus so you can kind of see the output is shifted is leading the output is leading the input because of j omega l if it was a capacitor you would see that moved over to the other side so as you can see you can learn a lot about a circuit by doing these kind of analysis and going back and reviewing the chapters we talked have talked about in the class and the in, in, in the electrical circuits uh, and just kind of comparing your theoretical analysis of formulas versus what the simulation says you need to be doing. The other thing I wanted to do is just, again, once again, if I go on a component and click, uh, for whatever reason, it really likes blue, and blue is kind of hard to see, so let me change that to a different color, maybe a little easier to see. So now we're looking at the current, and you can kind of see the current is shifted, but now the current is shifted to the right. Uh, because v, uh, I is equal to V over Z, and since Z is J omega L, you kind of have that, uh, that was a plus 90, but it's in the denominator, so it, it becomes a negative, so it shifts to the right. 
so a lot of a lot of good things here uh, that brings us to the end of this video um, telling us um, kind of how to define a signal uh, custom waveforms how to use transient sim uh, simulation to look at it over time and make decisions and hopefully improve our design